So this is the second of our three-week series on the Ten Commandments. And we're going to talk today about the first half of the Ten Commandments, those things that God said about how we are to interact with God. Now, if you remember from last week, we talked about how the commandments are not so much a list of things that we're supposed to do, but rather they're a list of characteristics that a person who is following God has. They're not a list of do this and you will be saved, but instead you are saved and therefore your life will look in this way. Because after all, God didn't give the Israelites the law and then when they followed it for a little bit, save them from the land of Egypt. He saved them from the land of Egypt and then gave them the law. I bring this up again because it's very important With the Ten Commandments, it's easy to fall into this trap of thinking that it's about following rules, that it's about checking things off, and once you get the first commandment down, then you get the second commandment down, and the third commandment down, and... But that's not going to work. Instead, it's about following God, seeking after God, and then, as we seek after God, the things that the Ten Commandments say that we will do will just start happening in our lives. Because God says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. He already rescued his people. They don't need to rescue themselves again by keeping to a set of rules. Now this is even more true now as we live under the new covenant in Jesus Christ. Because nowhere in the Beatitudes that we read today does it say, Happy are the people who keep the Ten Commandments. Instead, it says, happy are people who are hopeless, who are grieving, who are humble, who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Happy are people who are merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers, persecuted. It's a very different picture of people who are happy than what we might be used to, but we must always remember the key verse of all of this is Matthew 5, 3, happy are people who are hopeless, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Because the whole Sermon on the Mount and even the Beatitudes are there to remind us that we cannot, on our own effort, do anything to earn our own salvation. We can't follow the Ten Commandments and keep the rules and think that we're going to earn something for ourselves because that's what it's really about. Now, I don't really like hopeless as a translation there. There's not, it's really a hard concept to get across because the thing that we're trying to say is happier people who realize that they need God. Happier people who realize that it's not a list of following things that get us our salvation. It is instead knowing that Jesus did all of the things for us that we need to be saved. And as the Sermon on the Mount continues and we'll look into the second half of the Ten Commandments next week, you'll see just how impossible it is for us to save ourselves because the standard that is set for us is to be as perfect as our Father in heaven. And I don't think any of us are going to be able to pull that one off. And so if the Ten Commandments are rules to be followed, it can easily drive us into hopelessness. And if we can't hope to follow them, how can we meet the standard that God has? But of course, the good news is that we don't have to. The good news is that when we are in this place of hopelessness, of being poor in spirit, as it's sometimes translated, when, it's, when we come to that place where we realize that we need God, That's where the kingdom of heaven is. That's where God comes to meet us instead of us having to go and meet God. So just as the Ten Commandments are given to a people who have already been rescued from slavery, God also gives these to us as a people that he has already rescued, not from slavery in Egypt, but from slavery to sin. God in Jesus Christ rescued us from sin and death 
And as we walk in that, as we walk in knowing that we are saved by him, the things that God has for us will just fall into place. We won't have any other gods because only one God is the one who saved us. We won't won't misuse God's name because why would we misuse the name of the one who rescued us? We will set apart time for ourselves to rest with God because we want to rest with God. We want to spend time with him. And we will honor our parents because it is like honoring our heavenly parent. And as long as we remember that our Christian walk isn't about following these rules, but instead about following God, the kingdom of heaven is ours. And that's what it's all about. And there's nowhere that this is more evident than in baptism. Because in baptism, there's nothing that a little child can do really at all, right? They cry a lot. They make some messes. They're kind of adorable. But they can't follow the Ten Commandments, right? They just can't get their little baby brains around that. But God still reaches out to them and to all of us. Because in baptism, it's not about what we do. It's not about the water that gets splashed on us. It's not about the faithfulness of anyone who brings this child forward. It's about what God is saying. About God reaching out to a child and him saying, I love you. I care for you. I want the best for you so much that I went to a cross for you. And that is what the Christian walk is all about. It is God reaching out to us when we can't reach out to him and then living a life that reflects what he has done for us, that reflects the love that he has shown us and that shows who God is by how we act each and every day as we live out the Ten Commandments, not because we must, but because that's what happens when you follow God. 